Hey everyone, Rob here from Octagon. Um, this little tutorial taking you through three methods I know for uh, vertically aligning buttons uh, at the bottom of tiles. Now this is the, the third video um, and the third method that I'm going to walk you through. The first two showed you, um, the second one we used a little bit of custom CSS and the first one we used settings that are purely available in the Divi Builder, which is great. Um, and this third one I'm going to show you is a little bit trickier, um, but it's actually my preferred method um, and it's uh, using uh, um, some more custom CSS, so I'm going to walk you through that. So just you know, to highlight what we've got here, we've got our three tiles. Um, they've got white backgrounds, which actually is the uh, white background on the, um, on a column, on each of the three columns. And we've got a um, couple of blurbs, a three, well, one, two, three blurbs, and at the bottom we've got um, button modules. And as you can see, they're not aligning because our content has uh, there are different amounts of content. And okay, so what we're going to do. We're going to go to settings on our button, we're going to go to CSS, main element field, and we're going to go position absolute. Now, if you really want to get your head around CSS, um, one of the biggest aha moments you'll have is when you get your head around positioning. Um, it is difficult, a little bit tricky to explain. Um, just you know, Google it if you want. There's some actually some really good blogs out there that help walk you through it. Um, but it is something that you'll definitely want to have, get your head around. But, um, so I won't explain what absolute positioning does, but I'm going to show you that we're going to use it anyway. So we're going to get position absolute, set left to zero. We're going to set right to zero. We're also going to set bottom to zero. Now, what I do know is because we're playing with um, position absolute, I do know that our visual builder doesn't properly represent what we actually get on the front end. So I've just hit save on the button, hit save on the page. Let's get back over to our front end. Okay. So it's sitting it down, as you can see, just is obviously doing something slightly different. And that's because they're um, within the the visual builder there is some um, some other styling rules that are overriding what we end up actually seeing on the front end. Um, so a couple of things I want to one more thing I want to do is I actually want to it's it's obviously it's it's right up against the edges of our tile. I want to put some space around that. So let's do that now. Let's go to settings for our button again. So back over to CSS and main element. Um, I want to go margin left twenty pixels. I'm just going to copy that line. And do it twice more. Go margin right, margin bottom. Let's hit save, save. If I recall correctly, that should. I think it's because I have to set important on the bottom margin. Let's try that. What important does in CSS or exclamation mark important? It just, there we go. It just basically says, um, it puts priority on that particular line of styling and that particular line of CSS. It says, look, there may be other lines of CSS that are um, applying styles, which was in this case, um, but we want this particular line to take priority. So that's what applying important did to that one there. There we go. So the, the final thing we want to do um, is we want to just put a bit more space below the blurb. So that's simple enough. We just go to settings for the blurb, design, margin, bottom. Um, I'm actually going to do, this is just a bit of a trial and everything. We'll try 80 pixels. All right. That looks pretty good. I'm also going to just copy that chain, which is the margin. So copy and paste style to our three blurbs. And then I'm going to copy and paste. And I know you can do these with keyboard shortcuts now, which is great, but I'm just doing it a bit more manually so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm copying and pasting the styling, which includes our CSS, for our buttons. No, it doesn't. It doesn't include CSS. So let's go grab that ourselves. So there's the stuff that we wrote. There we go. Now 
just hit save. Obviously, it's not lining up here. But when we view over on the front end, it does. That looks great. Now, as I said, it's a bit trickier, this method. You, you do need to probably have a, a, a fairly decent understanding of CSS and how it works. Um, the upsides, it's far more efficient. Some of the, I think the first method I showed you, we were, we were duplicating a number of resources, but um, we, we don't, there's no duplication here, which is good. Um, so the, the downsides would be, yeah, it, it, is, it is a little bit tricky. Um, and also, you can see with this method, our buttons are actually, um, in a sense, full width, minus the uh, space we put around them, but full width of the container, of the tile. Um, you can't achieve... A, uh, just a normal button which sort of may sit at that sort of size and in the middle. Um, but this is my preferred method. If you can get your head around it, I would, I would certainly recommend this method. But otherwise, check out the other two tutorial videos and um, hopefully one of the three methods that I've shown you can help you with your next project.